Hey everyone, it's Q&A Fridays, and this week I'm filming at a cemetery, and I thought I'd like to pay a few respects to some of the people here. I'm gonna go through maybe 10 uh, different tombstones and pay respects to some of the people there and read their epitaphs to you guys, and you know, maybe it'll be put into the memory of some of the people online. First of all, we're gonna go through five questions for Q&A Fridays this week. Okay, number one, why do British people never sound British when they sing? I don't think they don't sound British at all. <laughs> a lot of British rappers sound British, and also when you listen to a lot of operas and things like that, they do sound British, so this question is invalid. Number two, why do they call it weed when it's so hard to grow? I don't have a comment on that. I don't know how to grow weed. Um, number three, why do they have handicapped parking spaces in front of the skating rings? Whoever wrote these questions don't know grammar and they don't know words. I think they mean skating rink. And there are handicap wheelchair things that you can take onto a skating rink. Another invalid question. Okay, number four. Why do computers only tell you when they're doing something wrong, but never when they're doing something right? There's no point in telling you when there's something right. Actually, my computer does tell me the battery is excellent, so it tells me the health of my computer. So another invalid question. And final question number five. When robbing a bank with the best thing to wear be women's clothing and a saucepan on your head just to make the actors on Crime Watch look stupid. That would be pretty funny, but why would you do that just to have a joke for somebody and risk your entire life in jail? Okay, those are the five questions. Let's get to some of the memorials here and hopefully we'll be able to pay respect to some of them and um, you know keep their memories into the nether sphere of the internet. Okay, so I'm at one of these tombstones here and got a statue here and let's read this here. So it's for James Adson Powell, born February 27th, 1857 and died December 26th, 1922. Beautiful. I hope this never gets forgotten, but uh, to be quite honest, I don't think the family even knows this tombstone exists anymore. And at the back of it is in loving memory of George A. B. Powell, eldest son of James and Alicia Powell, born May 1884, died June 2nd, 1904. So I guess there's two people under here, under this tombstone. Let's look at a few more here. I'm quite intrigued by some of these tombstones. Each one of these has such an incredible story of people long forgotten. Okay, well look at this one. Up here somebody has visited this recently. Don't know if it's the family or just another person like me who just am um, curious about these. Uh, in memory of Vernon Ernest, son of J and M Carter, November 26, 1900, died in 1982. So this could be somebody's grandparents. At the bottom it says together always. At the bottom of this one, which is for Matilda, uh, the beloved wife of Chaz J Carter, died December 4th, 1907. Wow, this is like a family tombstone here. Um, in her 37th year old, and then John Carter died July 28th, 1907, died at 18 months age. The loss to sight to memory, dear. Wow, this is very intriguing. On this side here, in loving memory of Chaz John Carter, 1964 to 1957, at rest. Yes, fourth side. In loving memory of Ruth Elizabeth Lucas, daughter of V. E. V. E. Carter, February 1926 to November 2009. Cherished daughter, mother, and grandmother. So this is like a tombstone estate here. It's incredible that such a family legacy is on this one tombstone here. I'm very impressed, actually. Okay, let's look at this one here. Our darling Annie died August 1905, nine months and 13 days. Oh. I'm gonna take a look at that big one over there. So I'm at that big tombstone here, very sad. This tombstone has been vandalized. Sink your heartbeat to mine, KNC 10-7-2010. So here's the front side of this tombstone. Very incredible, the way it's built out of brick. Was the last. In loving memory of Susan Little, beloved wife of James B. Little, born November 1865, died December 27th, 1912. The same year Titanic sunk, age 47 years, at rest. Hopefully somebody will clean the other side of this and really give them rest. Let's look at this one here. In loving memory of Winifred Everett Alcock, born March 1870, 
Bethany died October 1912 and it says someday the silver cord will break and I no more as now shall sing but oh the joy when I awake within the palace of the king. Joseph Benjamin Alcock born 1866 died February 1921. Okay, let's look at this one here. This one looks important here. Napoleon Roland, 1881 to 1971, at rest. And then there's Gordon, 1915 to 1994. There's also this on the side here. Wow, these are incredible. They're, there's a lot of families on this. In memory of Jane Roland died February 1911, age 23 years, three months and 13 days. We loved her, yes, we loved her, but Jesus loved her more. He has sweetly called her something two o'clock in the morning to yonder shining shore the golden gates were opened and a gentle voice said come and with farewells unspoke she calmly entered home very sweet indeed william roland 1955 to 1942 at rest margaret roland 1860 to 1952 also at rest take a look at this one here it's got a beautiful Celtic cross here. A loving memory of Herbert Charles Wilson, MD, born at Picton, Ontario, December 1859, died in Edmonton, Alta, December 17, 1909. And then there's something at the bottom here, just covered in snow. Also in memory of his only son, Lieutenant Charles Arthur Wilson, born Edmonton, August 1887. Died, it looks like something Flanders. I can't read it because the ice is in the way. June 1916, so a doctor and his son who died in Flanders Fields. Okay, I don't know how many this is. I think this is the sixth one. In loving memory of Gordon L. Cunningham, 1881 to 1928. You shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Christ Jesus. Okay, here's, a, here's one here that piqued my interest. Mustard, I wonder if they ever were in the army. In loving memory of William, 1892 to 1970, and Cora B, 1896 to 1989. Ever remembered, ever loved. I can't read this. It looks like it's been broken before, somehow knocked over or just broken over time. But it's so old that you can't even read this tombstone. So whoever this is, may they rest in peace. I think I'll end with this one here for our Q&A Fridays. You can barely read it. Adelaide Alicia Smith, beloved wife of Thomas Anderson, died January 1895 at 63 years of age. And then Thomas Anderson, born Newcastle, Ontario, something. July 22nd, 1819, died in Edmonton, October 1911. He giveth his beloved sleep. Something children. I can't read what that says here. Something husband there. Oh, and there's one on this side too. Memory of Jenny Braithwaite, daughter of Thos Anderson, died March 6, 1914, age 52 years of age. I lied. This one is actually the last tombstone I will stop at today because I recognize this name at the bottom, Grote. And indeed, it says, Pioneer in loving memory of Malcolm Grote, born at Halkirk, Caithness, Scotland, April 1st, 18. 36, died at Edmonton, Alberta, May 17th, 1912. As Hermans do the dew that doth on Zion's hill descend, for there the blessing God commands, life that shall never end. Gone, but not forgotten. And he has not been forgotten because Groat Road is named after this guy. Here's the rest of the family. In loving memory of William C. died April 25th, 1897, died 21 years. Also of Robert Andrew, died January 13th, 1899, aged seven years. Sons of Malcolm and Margaret Goat, Groat. He giveth his beloved sleep. Thomas A. Groat, 1886 to 1949. Gladys M. Herman, daughter of Thomas, 1912 to 1999. Rudolph A. Herman, 1908 to 1891. And the fourth side. Margaret Christie, wife of Malcolm Groat, died December 22nd, 1915, age 64 years. And then Margaret Louise Hutchinson died March 27, 1972, John Osborne Grote, killed in action in France in 1917, father of Margaret Louise, whose age was 71 years. So that's the visit to the cemetery, and I hope it gives some of those people uh, some more extra memory for them so that they're not forgotten. That's it for Q&A Fridays. See you soon.